we consider the collision between A and B and use conservation linear momentum and Newton's law of restitution. This gives us two equations with two unknowns and we can solve them simultaneously to work out the speed of A after the collision. To find the speed of B, we just sub the speed of A back into one of our simultaneous equations. To find the speed of B after it's hit the wall, we just apply Newton's law of restitution or Newton's experimental law. So V equals EU and we can work out the speed that B comes away from the wall at. To find the required time capital T, we use the fact that both objects are traveling with a constant speed. So we can use the fact that constant speed is equal to distance over time to get an expression for the time uh, in between the various collisions. So we can find the time for B to get to the wall. We can find the distance traveled by A in that same time. And hence we can find the time it takes for B to collide with A after hitting the wall. We can add our two times together to get the total time. For part A, we just need to look at the collision between P and Q and apply conservation linear momentum and Newton's experimental law and solve simultaneously. Now that we know the value of E, we can work out the actual velocity of P after the first collision. It turns out to be positive, so it's continuing towards the wall Q has bounced off the wall and therefore there will be another collision. We've been given the value of E is 0.8 and therefore we can sub that back into the information from the beginning of the question and we therefore work out that P is moving away from the wall with this value. We can work out the speed that Q comes away from the wall at and if there's going to be a second collision then the speed of Q after it's hit the wall has to be greater than the speed of P after its collision between P and Q and this enables us to get the inequality for F.